After a long and successful career in Indianapolis, Joyce moved to Santa Barbara in 1996 and served on the faculty at Brooks Institute until 2013. Her images have appeared in numerous advertising campaigns, featured in solo and group exhibitions, and included in the permanent collections of five museums, including the Santa Maria, I'm sorry, Santa Barbara Museum of Art. She was awarded the International Photographic Council Leadership Award at the United Nations in 2003 and Professional Photographers of America Lifetime Achievement in 2006. Joyce embraced photography as an art and is continually growing and experimenting, blending old world technology with contemporary techniques. Her materials include Photoshop and collage, polymer photogravure, edging, gold leaf, encaustic, pastels, oil, and acrylic paints. She shares this knowledge by teaching creative workshops, mentoring teenagers through the Santa Barbara Arts Fund, and is active in the Santa Barbara art community. Joyce, thank you so much for being our judge tonight. Our next judge is Jane Gottlieb. Jane began as a painter. Or were you gonna introduce me? Evolved into a photographer, then began using Photoshop to create a unique reality with vivid colors. She's created a large body of work that is characterized by vivid, vivid saturated colors, stylized architectural forms, mystery, and emotion. Her art has, seen, has been shown in several dozen solo exhibitions and exhibited in many venues around the world. And she has published in numerous magazines and books. She has over 100 large aluminum prints on display at UCSB and UCLA. Jane earned her BA in painting and art history at UCLA and studied graphic design at the School of Visual Arts in New York City. She has had successful careers in New York, Los Angeles, and San Francisco, and has served on a number of boards, including the Santa Barbara Museum of Art. Jane just installed her biggest artwork ever, 14 by 15 feet at the UCSB library. So once again, Jane, thank you so much for being our judge tonight. Our club judge tonight is Judith Barrett. For Judith, photography has been a part of her life even before she could talk. Her father, a commercial photographer, took a photograph of her that ended up in an ad in the newspaper. Fast forward some 50 years when Canon released the D60 in 2002 with her first digital camera, a crop sensor with six megapixels, her passion for creating her own images began. Today, Judith still shoots with a Canon, now with a full frame sensor and 30 megapixels. But she credits her improved results to her creativity and practice, not to the new equipment. Her goal is to continue learning in both straight photography and in compositing images. So Judith, thank you so much for being our judge, our club You're judge. Welcome. Thank you for asking me. lucky to have this image. Um, for one, I think it's beautifully composed and the colors just are so playful. Whatever the treatment of, I think it's a filter, was well done. My only problem I have is the bottom right hand corner of the image looks like it was duplicated from um, what was right what is right before that duplication and the color being yellow it, it just doesn't carry the eye through the image other than that i just think it's wonderful and it's just so playful and joyous well i thought this was a, a really interesting image it totally has the mystery, the intrigue, the kind of, I don't know what these three, four images are doing together here, but they're all, they make me look at it. It's intriguing. You know what I mean? Mysterious, intriguing, 
It's also a unique composition, nothing I would usually see. I mean, it, it's just, it's odd. It's off and yet all it all works together to me, except for the odd face, which is kind of disturbing because the rest of it to me is, has some whimsy and sort of playful and, you know, these bubbles are maybe water and you know what I mean? And then this is that head looks like somebody underneath a stocking, you know, a nylon stocking. So that, that's a little odd for, off for me, especially holding the rose, which is also soft. So, you know, I think it's interesting that it has that dichotomy going on. Well, I thought this image was really nicely done as a black and white. I love the tonal values, the handling. Uh, the makers obviously toned down the edges a little bit. And the concept, concept's really interesting. I enjoyed the implication of a city or buildings in the light area that appears at the bottom of the shaft that's going down. So that's my comments, thank you. Well, the maker did capture the dog at a perfect place because his feet, the three feet I can see are off the ground and he's directed right towards the camera. He's, uh, I mean, you have no doubt this guy wants to deliver the ball. Unfortunately, I feel the texture does not make it a, an altered reality, really. It's, it's, the dog is so real and so as is that I think the texture just, I mean, it softens the whole thing. Um, also, you could make this, if you cropped in from both sides, creating a vertical, you could get that feeling, that sort of tunnel feeling where he's just shooting right at you, but it's still, um, I still have trouble considering this altered reality. Comment, please. Sure. Is that, is that okay? Yep. Yes. Uh, Judith mentioned that it wasn't abstract or altered enough, and the maker could take the idea of, of Picasso's work and kind of cube this off, like mm. almost like pixelated, but not so unsharp, but do it with sharp pixelation and cube it off and offset it a little bit, it'd be really interesting, especially as a vertical like Judith mentioned. Thank you. I thought this was an, another intriguing image. We know it's protest and there's protest going on. This, but when you look at this, it doesn't really look like it's real. It looks like it's, I'm not sure what it is. It looks like it's dolls or something, but maybe it's real. It certainly has a statement, but when you suddenly start talking about altered reality, maybe it's not real. And that's why somebody just pasted this all together and made them in silhouette and put this odd uh, shape in the sky. So I, I thought it was you know, kind of mysterious and it made me look at it for a while. I want to see what's going on. I can't keep quite tell. I mean, is this person falling down? Are these people protesting or are they real? Anyway, that's my critique. I thought this image was really fun. It's so whimsical and a little just fascinating the photographer handled the concept and the montaging really well, giving me just enough information to enjoy the story. I love the fact that the tight cropping of the, rob of the rabbit figure so that it's really right there in my face with the background, with the, the old um, uh, pub, it looks like a pub or whatever they called it in the old days, the bar, the saloon, that's what it was. That's it, saloon. Yeah, 
And I, I thought it was absolutely brilliant to put the rabbit in a lady's dress, a flowered dress that's so wacky compared to a saloon in, the, in this period. So just really fun and well done, well concept because the pink of the dress matches that little pink nose. Just a fun, funny image. Thank you. Wow. This image demands attention. What starts out with a wide angle view that emphasizes the pattern of the roof and the leaves of the trees is narrowed down by following the gold bands on either side to the center of the image behind the tree. Are we entering into a mystical world of hope for our future? The only thing I can say is the blue on the, of the sky draws my eye out of the picture. I would have liked to maybe have seen the green leaves of the trees fill that in. But I find this um, a very mystical image that could be interpreted, interpreted different ways but I thought the photographer did a great job of putting everything together. I always shoot in color. I wrote down that, you know, besides the fact that I wish that was in color, I thought it was beautifully done and really sharp and that, you know, it's very unusual making it even vertical like that and just those points. And I wasn't sure what it was, so I had to look closely. So I, I thought it was really a good image. Again, this is a little bit of a whimsical, fun image. The light direction in this image is wonderful, highlighting the bunny's profile and the edges of his great big ears. I love that edge lighting. The cropping's good with the eye demanding attention. The color harmony in this image is especially pleasing. I love the purple tones in the background. It's kind of a variation of the bunny's fur in parts of his fur, you see that purple played again. And then the yellow tones in the foreground of the grass, the perfect complement to the purple. I enjoyed this and I love the fact that the, the maker has that background so out of focus. Okay, I had to look at this twice because at first I didn't see that fabulous little catfish in the um, bird's claws. I think the capture was perfect. The angle of the wings, um, beautiful. The exposure might be just a touch hot on, on the white part of um, the bird's body, but it doesn't really spoil it for me. And I love the fact that the background is soft focus Maybe it could have had a little more room on the right side for the bird to fly into. But again, that doesn't bother me either. I, I'm taken away by the wingspan and that poor little catfish. Well, I went back and forth with the thought processes on this image. I like the color harmony and the, the edge lighting's fabulous. Technical handling of the subjects, well done. But for some reason, the viewpoint is really rigid and symmetrical. And it 
it's so it works because it gives you the feeling of wrought ironwork or an architectural structure. Not necessarily bad, but I kept wanting to move the camera angle or crop into a tighter area to create to kind of create something that was more unique or a really abstract a portion of it. Thank you. I really, really love this image. As before I mentioned, I was into color and then this has really soft color, um, not real bright color, but for me, the contrast really works. I love how the folk, it's technically so well done. It's so in focus, sort of like a durr when you see those little white brush strokes almost at the top. And yet you know that this is a small little flower but it feels really grand. And you can also kind of feel the movement of it because I think it's one of those, when you blow it, it goes away. I can't remember what that's called. <laughs> um, so I love this picture. I think it works beautifully. What a cute little bird. <laughs> you know, it looks like he's just singing away with happiness. Um, the composition is fine. Uh, although the, well, I was gonna say the sky's a little blah, but that's okay. It helps the bird to stand out. But I think um, my problem is the bird seems to be soft and not in not as in focus as some of the things in in the uh, bush. Um, other than that, I don't think I have too much to say. Well, I also had to look at this for a long time because I just didn't know what to look at. And there are a lot of things to look at here, but I kind of wish I was told a little more by, by the cropping. And because this is a large space with a lot of little details in it and but at the same time, it keeps you looking at it. And I have a feeling that the photographer wanted that. But there are some shapes in there that are, you can see a few in the center there that are these beautiful sort of deco lines. I personally would have cropped in a, to make this a quarter of this and been able to feel that movement, like the top right corner. Um, and I'd love to discuss it with the photographer because I'm sure there's a reason they didn't do that. Maybe it's a whole shape of it that really appealed to them. All of that ends up being sort of a heart or sort of a face, uh, you know, could be a lot of things. Well, I enjoyed the title of this especially and the wonderful color tones and the feeling of this image the uh, soft out of focus background enhances the bird's soft fur coat. The photographer placed the bird perfectly for attention with the beak and eye and the golden mean. I know that nature Im images aren't to be tampered with in any way, but I wanted so badly to retouch out the green leaf jutting from the bird's breast mm. and to take out the pink blossom <laughs> on the branch between his feet. I kept looking at it and it, I thought it was a, that his bird, the bird had three feet and that <laughs> kind of kept messing with my vision. But other than that, I think it's really well done. Thank you. Well, I thought this was a terrific picture. I, I really like the, the composition and of course, they are incredible just to look at this closely. And the background sort of uh, fortunately is out of focus, could have been even more out of focus so they'd stand out even more to me because they look really gorgeous and very sharp. I love, you know, 
uh, I wrote that I loved it and I love the way they're looking at each other. And one seems to be yelling at the other one. <laughs> That's it. I enjoyed seeing the three um, pronghorns, but I felt that they, I was seeing two different images and that's probably because the, uh, the one on the left was facing outward. Um, so I might make this a smaller square and take advantage of this wonderful um, shallow depth of field and the great looks on um, both of the pronghorns on the right. Um, you know, they are stark still and staring not moving a bit. The, the exposure was beautiful. Um, I just find it, I want to just split the image in half. And lower, lower the um, crop line down to take about a fourth of the top off. And then I think it would be more effective. But I liked it. Well, this is so simple and elegant and great technical execution, but I probably would have cropped this a bit tighter, still leaving the image way over to the right as they've done here. That's just my thought process. But in competition, so many times the photographer needs to find segments of an area to kind of show some abstraction or a surreal view so that we're not certain what we're looking at. I don't need all that white space. It's okay, but I just think it would have been much more powerful if it were possibly in a vertical with a lot of space off from the back, the right, and just enough in the front. And it just would have read better to me. I get lost with all this white space on the left because it's almost crops perfectly in half. How refreshing to see an abstract in the nature category. It, I can't say as I understood exactly how that abstraction took place. Was it camera movement? Although I don't think so. Was it the ripple in the water? Um, it, this just makes me want to look at it over and over. Um, the color combinations are great. Oh, another country heard from. Um, I could even see this rotated uh, 90 degrees counterclockwise so that the branches are on the bottom to maybe make it look even a little more abstract. But I thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, and I, I thought the, capturing that motion was great. I, I can see these patterns and I think that Joyce, I've heard Joyce speak about images with patterns like this on it and, um, and seen the elegance in them. And for me though, because these are such old dying trees, I can't help but feel that energy as well and not quite see the beauty of the pattern. So it's, it's sort of a disturbing piece to me. And I sort of thought about it being cropped in also and maybe just showing the front tree, the biggest tree and not having it, it backed up by more of these dead, you know, rang, what's the word? Strangly, what is it when they're twisty? Anyway, <laughs> so that, that's what it did to me. Somebody else might have seen something completely different. Joyce, maybe you have something to say about roots. Well, I agree. Uh, I absolutely loved the front part of this. I would have cropped it in really tight Mm -hmm. from the top get rid of all oh, good. the background up at the top we don't need all that green 
come in yeah. real tight because look, there's two ghosty faces in the front of that. See the eyes? And mm -hmm. there's yes, yes. I see faces. And oh my God, if you crop in really tight from the top and then from mm -hmm. the right side and the left, just to that beautiful area in the center, and then let those branches come down at the base, it's awesome. Yeah. But as is, I it's just ordinary. <laughs> Sorry. Yeah, yeah. Or it's disturbing for me. It's like too much. It's busy. Right. Too much information. I, I don't know where to look. I don't know where to look. Yeah. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> um, I thought the title was just perfect. Uh, the face says it all. Super sharp, where the photographer chose to focus, um, making the rest of the birds secondary. The maker left no doubt what was the most important thing in the image. I love everything about it. I did. Well, this is like the one Jane just had with the tree. <laughs> this has a lot of possibilities, but as it's presented, it's just busy and rather ordinary. The light quality and the color is lovely. But there's a saying I use when teaching, I can't see the tree for the forest. A camera yeah. angle to the left would have given a better view of the mother duck and perhaps a higher or lower camera angle would have worked better. This, all needs, this, this image needs a unique crop without placing the brood directly in the center. And I think it could have helped it immensely. Different camera angle and different cropping. Thank you. Oh, thank you. The brood scored 18. Next image is the macaws assigned to Jane Gottlieb. 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 Um, Gottlieb. <laughs> I, uh, I used to have a big colorful parrot and photographed it all the time. And I thought these were beautiful pictures of parrots. I love the composition. Um, you can't even, I like that it's tight on them. I want to see their eyes. And um, what, did, what did I write here? Beautiful color, perfect exposure. The composition is great. I think it's a lovely image. I like it a lot. Well, I really enjoyed this image. It's very dramatic and I love the strong yellow and purple. It's a beautiful color complement and the way it's used in this <laughs> so the, the photographer just happened to capture it when it was perfectly lit. The shaft of light coming in from the top right lights that school of fish so beautifully. And then what I loved was that little tiny yellow guy heading in towards the group. It's just glorious. The only negative comment regarding the title, too much information and the title's boring. I'm sorry, but I'm really a stickler about this. I want to be romanticized and I want my imagination to wander a little bit. Titles are tough, but start thinking like an artist, not a travel salesman. In other words, how about something like cocktail time or flight of fancy. I don't need to know where this was taken and in the exact point on a map, but I love the image and I want to stay intrigued with it. Thank you. I have never done star trails, but I do understand that you have to have a high degree of technical expertise to pull this off. Um, which I think the maker shows. Um, when I think of vortex, I think of being drawn into the center. And the foreground, I know, at, well, I'm assuming it was light painted, but I find that it's a bit on the bright side. And so I'm like bouncing to the rocks and to the star trails. Um, but I do appreciate the technical um, ability of the maker. <laughs> Good 
See, that, that's a fun title. Um, I thought this composition was great. I would have brought it in just a little bit tighter because really the face and the tail are the important part of this, even though these lines of the other seals make this a landscape. Um, I guess if it were had a little color, that would be nicer. It, it's lacking something to me, but it's a lovely image of those seals. And I also wrote, yes, it's like, that's it. It's like a landscape. It's kind of, it's kind of cool. Comment. I know, well, Jane, I yes. know Jane loves color because she works with color. I know it's hard. <laughs> I know, but I work with monochromatic and I thought this was glorious. I absolutely loved it. So just oh, good. Got to remember that there are some. Yeah, but this is, yes, like remember. Color as well. <laughs> yeah, no, no, it's true. I got them thinking who I really asked. Uh, anyway, I asked who chose these? Because I, I got a lot of black and white images, which I, is harder for me to critique. Yeah. But that's all right. It's good. It's a good challenge for me. And I see the beauty in them, too. I like black and white images. It's not, it doesn't have to be in color for me to like it. That's absolutely for sure. I was so glad that this came up for my critique. I think this is so- I was jealous. <laughs> it is so powerful. It's such a strong image. I know that Chris Broughton uh, judges and recently gave a presentation on street photography for the camera club. And he would absolutely love this, even though it's obviously more a travel photograph, there's that street photography element to it. Every element of this it's a glorious photograph in the simple, beautiful image. The composition is perfect. The elegance of black and white. Thank you for not cluttering it with color. I'm sorry, Jane. No, but no, I, I love, love this. I love I this love image. It. I think it's and stunning. The power, the power of the design, the verticals, and then the horizontal lines connecting and leading the eye back to the child. And then having that child just happen to be in stripes repeats the design. I would have given this a 10 or a 20 if possible. I just thought it was gorgeous. And that they are. They're beautifully captured uh, and the composition is lovely. It takes you from the left angle down to the right. The um, center flower that's looking at you straight on is very sharp and sort of makes you want to fall into it. Um, the only problem is <clears throat> there's a spot um, on the image, uh, well, it's not, it's on the background where the maker was masking out what was there and they left a little residue. Um, otherwise I would have scored it higher, as well as the, um, on the upper left, the pink petal that's going straight, straight up, the biggest one, has a black outline, which I know shouldn't, shouldn't be there. 
but it's very pleasing. The composition is just lovely. It's beautiful, it's elegant, it's very minimal. You know, it makes you think of, it's shiny, so it makes you think of a rainy day walking, you know, watching where you're walking. It's so graphic. You know, it's, it's very elegant. That's it. Yep. Okay. <laughs> I like Thank that you. strong composition. Well, I had a little problem. I kept looking at this and trying to read into it. I know obviously that it's an image taken during a theater, theater performance. The lighting's dramatic. And I like the choice to present it in black and white because I think that helps in this case. And I probably was perhaps a little harsh in my score, but I just found it a bit confusing to view. There wasn't any place for my eye to land and I keep searching for a strong point of interest. Just, um, I don't know, you know, if, if it were mine, I would have started cropping in and taken out all those things in the background or the, at least the, the horizontal lines and trying to find something that I could really focus on, but my eyes just bouncing all over the place. And that's it, thank you. What a peaceful scene. Um, I looked at this a long time and of course wished I was there, but the reflections in the glass distract me. I know it's the reflection of probably the casino, but I find it does not add but take away from the serenity of the image. I understand what Judith's saying, but for me, all those reflections, see two viewpoints sometimes is so, because images like this are really confusing occasionally, but yes. I love the reflections. That which, that's what gave me a sense of mystery instead of it just being a very straight photograph. Well, I thought that was really lovely. I wish there'd been a little bit more light on the face the beak, that red beak, um, certainly could have been brought out in Photoshop, but I don't know if this photographer wanted to use Photoshop or not. But I thought it was, it's quite beautiful. I, I sort of like also the way the bird disappears into the background and it could have been cropped in also, really don't need all of, all of that. And then maybe I could have seen the bird a little better. There's a nice little light in its eye I think that's my my problem with it is is it should have been lightened a little bit and cropped in a little bit but I think it's a a really lovely image. I know I keep ending up saying lovely but it's lovely. It works. It's peaceful, it's beautiful. Oh my, I thought this was a fabulous concept and I love the execution of the idea. The presentation is so unique and interesting. Your eye just travels and you see the, the change in the, in the image, the space. I thought it was really well done. And I applaud the photographer for the triptych to, as a design to tell this story. Very good. Well, I have, I have a thing for old vehicles because I, they just look like sculptures to me. And this looks like a fabulous old sculpture that really has a history. Um, but it also has a funny little eye in the middle of it too. So it has this sort of whimsical feeling that you can't get away with. And it, it's very sharp. It's, the composition is really unique. And I think it works, I'm glad uh, I think maybe I might have, uh, doesn't matter, but I, I don't, the, the eye is sort of, sort of in the middle, but sort of not, I maybe would have tried to crop a little off the left and brought it more to one side to the left. But besides that, then I'd have to take off a little on the top, but just a little, I think it's a, a really 
uh, terrific image. I wrote, I really like the title, Forgotten Hero. Oh God, there's so many pictures of Forgotten Heroes. And they all have these long stories. I think it's a terrific image. Obviously, this is an architectural photograph shot perfectly. Um, the light, the lighting is handled extremely well. But I just looked at it and I said, why did the maker choose to show this view? I felt that possibly was it part of a series of photographs that they had been hired to do to, sh to show the structure on all sides. Um, are you cropping, Bill? Oh, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> That's okay. I did, I did the same thing, but hold on, I got a, oh, I had a sneeze coming on, sorry. Um, it just, I think it's a perfect example how something can be perfectly constructed and technically sound, but not, I feel like it doesn't have a soul. It's like, why? And I don't mean that to be insulting because I know you have to, the maker has to have um, a high degree of uh, technical expertise to produce this, but it doesn't make it for me. Well, this is a lovely documentation of what the photographer saw. There's nothing wrong with that. It's a beautiful, dramatic light. The way the light's hitting this um, wall, fresco wall, and the, it's the photographer saw it and used it to, to his advantage. Um, as I mentioned earlier, my biggest complaint is the title. I want mystery and intrigue, not a travel brochure. When finding areas like this, it's always, it's always a wonderful thing to document it so you can remember your trip. But to wow judges, if you're entering something in a photographic competition and to wow us, this needs to find, you need to find a segment of an area and crop and then show some kind of abstraction or this surreal view so that I'm not certain what I'm viewing. It could be anywhere. And I don't want that title telling me exactly where it was. Look how beautiful the foot and the, the woman's skirt and that foot hanging down and cropped real tight, maybe so you just saw the hands and the foot or over here, the, the old guy with his staff, just the arm and the staff with a little section. There's so, I, I would have found six images in this one space that could be used for competition. But as it is, it's just a documentary photograph. This is a nice landscape. Um, I'm assuming the lava is, are these rocks that are boulders are scattered around throughout the image. I have to admit, I didn't know that, but that's what I'm assuming. And um, I love the tones, they're beautiful. And your eye travels up the hill and over to the top of the hill on the right, um, but I'm not sure. I can't quite tell if we're supposed to be looking at that little peak in the center with the dark strip going down it. I don't know if that's um, relevant. I find the sky, the color of the sky is um, distracting for me. It, to me, the blue is too intense. If it had been toned down a bit, my eye would have stayed more in the lava flow because I find this interesting. I might also try to do in Photoshop some lighting of certain areas to bring out 
the trail of the lava. Um, that's all I have to say. Oh, so pretty. Very nice. It's a perfect time of day. And the photographer was just absolutely charmed that he was there at Sweet Light. Three seagulls, they're perfectly spaced for great composition. And this is just one of those pretty pictures that we never tire of. It's, it, it tells a story and yet everything's working. I enjoyed this very much, thank you. I thought that was beautiful, perfect timing. I wish it were a little sharper, but I don't really care. I love all that energy. I love the motion. I love that, what was it called? Uh, moment of impact. All right. Uh, I, I think it's a beautiful picture. I would have saturated it 20% more, just give it a little more contrast. I mean, the, uh, but part of it is that it's all lost in there. And so it, it works. I thank you. I like it very much. Here is a cityscape, architecturally strong, handled with expertise, but it, it's inviting. It's it makes me want to go there. It, and it starts at the right corner and curves around in several different levels. You find that repetition of that pattern of the curve. It's, it's lovely, it's luscious. Uh, I don't think the um, maker could have done anything else to improve upon the image. Well, I think that's, that's lovely. I love a really tight shot of a flower covered with dew drops and being able to see the edge of the leaves and those curves and it's, it's quite romantic and soft in some places, but pretty sharp. It could have been even sharper, but that's, that's okay. It's all lovely. It, I'm a little distracted by the leaf in the top right I do think of it as a, a, a lovely art shot. Ooh, this one was fun. It's dramatic, it's intriguing. I enjoyed the composition, great composition. The color is so perfect in this image with the yellow of the sand dollar accentuated with that rim of black that's framing it. And with texture and softness around it, all the elements a painter employs using color and texture. The photographer darkened the edges to pull my eye into the focus point, and it's technically and aesthetically well handled. I really enjoyed this one. When I first looked at this, I thought, well, yes, that's a squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> But then I started looking at it more closely. And I find this to be a very gentle way of handling this. It's, it's soft in the edges. The branches to me are not distracting because of the way the maker processed the image. I find it low key especially when you think of how destructive little squirrels are. I find this to be kind of the opposite of its personality. And I might say the center position of the squirrel, I think is perfect because it creates that static, quiet, pensive feeling that I get from the squirrel. I thought it was nicely done. Well, I love this picture. It's very Salvador Dali, retro, deco, you know, completely contrived and put together. And that's always interesting when someone does that. So they are telling a story. It doesn't even matter what that story might be for me, except there's only one hand on, the on that timepiece. 
it's called timepiece, so that doesn't tell me anything. <laughs> and uh, technically, it's really kind of terrific. I mean, we definitely read this man without with him being very nice and soft and out of focus. And the clock is really, you can read Elgin and all the numbers really sharp. But it should be like that since this person has obviously put this together. It better be well lit and easy to read in the front and it is so technically it's terrific and so much thought went into it i think it's uh nicely done this is a beautiful really dramatic black and white i love absolutely love the highlights on the tree branches framing across the top that kept my that keeps my eye kind of moving around the scene towards the focal point with this human walking off in the circle of light. It's really hard to do this kind of a dark photograph in black and white with two thirds of the images, almost black. It's hard to pull off, but whoever the photographer was did a great job on this. It's really admirable, thank you. Well, that's technically beautiful and it's not real, real sharp, but that's not one of the things that I care about as much as the feeling. And it's captured that hummingbird and the movement of the hummingbird's wings, but you still can see the wings, they're beautiful. And the perfect colorful flower, I think it's uh, composition is, is right and the eye travel is right. It's really well done. Should we just take a pause and bathe in this light that is so beautiful? And the expression on, I, I believe she's a dancer, but not entirely sure. Um, she looks like she's just absorbing the warmth of the light. And it, it's very sensual to me, very sensual. I love the colors. The brushwork, the artistic way they um, added the texture to the image. It reminded me of a sort of an old masters in a way, even though the lighting is different. But I think it was the, all the brush strokes and I thought it was just divine. Well, here I am a stickler for titles again. Too much information, I'm sorry. I just, I don't want you to tell me exactly what's going on. Um, it's well handled as a black and white image. And I love the fact that they chose black and white for this, the beard with his black hat and his dark set eyes and the, the clothing. It really worked. But like the title, the image has too much information. I, the backlighting's gorgeous on this particular image, but I would have loved it had it been cropped vertical to eliminate this white band on the bold edge on the right and to eliminate his arm just stretched out there going nowhere. So crop off from both sides and come in really tight 
are cropped horizontal coming in from the bottom to the middle white line. Oops, I'm sorry, I skipped down, looked at the wrong note. So just basically crop this and get rid of that busy background. And I think it would have been so much stronger. Thank you. This strikes me as a photojournalist, a photojournalistic image. And I think the title is perfect because you get that sense that fence is right there in, in the faces of the people looking out. I get a feeling like they wish they could walk in the water, but they are distanced. Um, I felt the, the um, exposure was handled really well. Uh, I just really en enjoyed it. I don't think I have anything to say, uh, anything else. Oh, I, I like this picture very much. Um, I, I, I kind of like that we just see that the people are this old couple with their hats and see them in profile. So we, they're part of this story of Lake Kachuma, which we've talked about cropping in, but on this one, I, I really like that they're part of this big landscape. I also would have made it a little more colorful, but the fact is that the woman in the center is on, almost the only color in the image, and that's kind of nice too. So you really go to her hat and to him, even though we, they're so small in this whole landscape. Maybe it would be better to crop in just a little bit, but uh, I think it's really uh, intriguing and technically really well done image. Nicely done. That's it. Thank you. Well, with the foggy concept, I thought the black and white was a good choice for this street photography image. But here we go again. The title and the image, both of them present too much information. The composition isn't strong enough. My eye is jumping back and forth from the toilet building over here on the right. And then it goes to the trash container and then to the white triangles in the street. And finally, I find this subject, the man's walking. So I would have just cropped this tighter either as a vertical at the, to get rid of this whole trash container from the backside and come into this tall tree in the middle with a little space off the bottom or crop horizontal coming in from the bottom to the middle white line in the street and take off from the top of the tall tree. So other ways to play with this, but as it's presented, it just didn't work for me. Thank you. So I didn't really know what this is, of course. <laughs> Um, are they documenting or is this a portrait? As a portrait, it's really kind of interesting. I like this hand coming in without seeing the person. I like the crop. We don't see too much of this guy. His red hair really, and with the red lips, really, really stand out. So it's an interesting portrait. And it is, I mean, with his eyes closed and his face relaxed, it has this also kind of a serenity to it. It's very nice. That's it, thank you. Okay, I looked at this, totally missed the walk in his mouth. I mean, <laughs> that is just priceless. And when I, First scored it, I thought, locking up. What the heck is he locking up? And then I go in and I say, what's that thing hanging down from his lip? And I thought, oh my God, the photographer saw that and he captured it. Ah, perfect, perfect. I love the tones. Uh, you know, it goes from black to white and uh, the concentration on the fellow's uh, face. I, I just 
thought it was a terrific image. Well, this is a really, really nice image. The color is so strong and dramatic. There's not much color, but what is there is really dramatic. I just wish the photographer had lifted his camera angle mm -hmm. just a little bit to isolate the fisherman and the metal net contraption in the bright area of the water. That's my only negative comment. Other than that, I thought it was really well done. Well, I, I think this again is um, more photojournalistic than it is about the bubble boy. Um, if maybe the title threw me off because I expected to focus on the bubble boy, but I'm not. I'm, I'm looking at the crowd, but I'm focusing on those bubbles. And so I, I felt while it was an interesting image, it didn't force me to focus on, on much. I just, I did keep going around and around, um, probably looking for the bubble boy, but I don't know what else to say. It, it just didn't seem complete to me. Well, I think that's a very powerful portrait. Her position, this composition around her, the lighting is, is backlit, but there's sort of this sepia or this feel that this picture could have been taken 50, 60 years ago, but probably was taken recently. I think the woman is, is partially what makes this so terrific and the black and white color sepia feel of it and the unusual lighting, she is not front lit at all makes it a really powerful portrait. Uh, a beautiful, to me, it seems studio portrait. You can see the highlights. It looks like two soft boxes uh, reflecting in her eyes. Beautiful woman. You can't convince me she's a special agent unless maybe <laughs> it's a real estate agent. That I could follow but the special agent I was thinking FBI you know CIA but it it's a lovely it's a lovely picture I was just thrown totally off by by the uh, naming of it I think possibly the skin might be a little too soft without um, it could have maybe a little bit more texture to it, but overall, it's well done. Well, this one really intrigued me. It's great street photography. The image has such a strong storytelling element. I, I absolutely love dad's upper body silhouetted against that white wall. And it really makes this work. And then the diagonal of the three dark areas from dad's hair down to the child's hair and then down to the, the little doggy. It's so dramatic. And then that the kid with his diaper, that little spots of white that repeats that white wall. I found it really fascinating and well done. Ooh, I think this is a terrific portrait too. I think the composition is perfect. This is also extremely intriguing. What is he got here? <clears throat> he is clearly from, you know, uh, a tropical place that is hasn't changed in a long time. I think black and white is perfect here too, even though I see a little blue. I don't know why. Uh, his face, we can is perfect lighting. I can see his eyes. I see his texture, his smooth skin. I think it's a, a really good portrait and intriguing and called the helmsman, right? 
Well, I thought this was a really strong portrait and just fascinating because it's so appropriate for the present time. The lighting's good and the triangle of pattern from the white <coughs> bag up to her mask and then down to that orange patch. It's really powerful. That's my comments. I, I enjoyed this one very much. Well, beauty is definitely in the eye of the beholder. And I think she is an interesting woman to hone in on um, with her gold teeth. And uh, let me be honest, the mole on her face, the scarf, the dangly earrings, you know, I'm, I'm making this story up in my mind, thinking she is a gypsy of sorts, and she's out and about selling her wares. Um, I like that the background is soft. The blue on the left side uh, in the background, I think, could be toned down a bit. But I find this a very um, compelling image and I like her eyes are just very clear and it's like she wants to talk to me so I think it's well done. I thought this was technically beautifully done. I like this composition. I think what's going on between these birds and where the photographer must be, which might be just right in the water uh, to get this shot. I, I like the movement of their wings. I like the, the green uh, vertical lines or grass behind them and then reflecting in the water. I think it's uh, a powerful nature image and uh, I, nature is not putting it down. I'm just saying it's, it's also an art image. It's also a powerful image and, um, and beautiful too. So I think it's very well done. And the print looked beautiful. Thank you. Well, I found this image very pleasing. Uh, the little touch of color coming through that fog is fascinating. It was a nice selection of the paper to print this image on. There was a soft matte surface that I thought worked really well for the subject. Print quality is good, but perhaps the image would be more interesting if cropped so the horizontal line of the wharf was not dead center and the two vertical lines of the posts were not spaced so equal distance from each side. Um, I don't know, try cropping in a little off the top and the right side, and it might just be a little more interesting. But other than that, I thought it was very pleasing. Thank you. One of the best places to see flowers along the central coast in spring is Summerland. The hills above Summerland are covered with spring splendor. A good place to start is along Ortega Ridge Road. There are huge fields of flowers to the east of Ortega Ridge and also to the west. Let's take a walk along the Coffin Family Trail that roughly parallels Ortega Ridge on the west. Starting at 229 Ortega Ridge, 
there's a trailhead where the easy trail immediately heads down the hill into fabulous views of flowers and local mountains. The wide trail was designed as an equestrian path, but it's friendly for all non-motorized travelers. There are picturesque fences, old snags, and views of the valley below along Sheffield Drive. There are nice ocean views and also inviting amenities like a shaded picnic table. The most scenic route ends back at Ortega Ridge, just across from Hunt Drive near 397 Ortega Ridge Road. We'll explore the east side of the road in the next video. Well, I'll take off. I'm assuming this was a commercial product and we were to view it as such. And if that's the case, I thought it worked. It's well executed as a short video clip to promote the beauty of Summerland and, and an introduction to the local trails. Any other comments? Well, I also thought it worked. I mean, I don't know where it's going on the internet somewhere under Summerland. And it'd be wonderful to do all the different trails. I like that. And it was well done right. for a little minute piece like that. Well, um, that then is the end of this uh, month's exhibition and the end of the 2020 exhibitions. Um, so next things coming up will be uh, some scoring and looking at images of the year and so forth. And we'll be back with our next exhibition in February. But uh, keep your eyes peeled on email and, and you'll uh, learn a little bit more about some of the things that are going on.